Bipin, you can carry. Yeah. On. So carpometacarpal dislocations. So I'm covering uh, carpometacarpal dislocations other than the thumb. So these are less than one percent of uh, hand and wrist injuries, and they are they occur with other associated fractures. So these are the most most of the dislocations are missed on X-rays of the wrist and hand due to overlapping of the bones. So I, with anatomy, I, you will realize that there is a volar carpometacarpal ligament. Dorsal carpometacarpal ligament is the strongest. There is an interosseous ligament. So in the motion, when you check the motion of your own hand, you'll see that the fourth and the fifth CMC joints are the most mobile and they are the most forgiving ones. Like whatever you do, the fourth and the fifth metacarpal joints are the most mobile ones. Second and third are very fixed, fixed joint. So any injury to the first and sec uh, sorry, second and third metacarpal joints uh, cause significant disability. Whereas injuries to the fourth and the fifth metacarpal joint, though, uh, though they are the, uh, the patient is able to make fist, but there is persistent pain and uh, it doesn't cause a very significant disability. So the type of joints here, uh, these are the same, the fourth and fifth are saddle type of joint, whereas second and third are uh, plain type of joint structures and they are relatively rigid. So what you will look at the radiograph. So these are very subtle dislocations. Patients complain of pain, swelling and uh, injury, mostly a bike accident or a fall on a, out on a hand. So always look for the CMC uh, carpometacarpal clear space. So this is, this is very obvious here. If there is a fracture uh, dislocation or if there is a fracture uh, dislocation of the CMC joint, this, cl this clear space won't be there. You have to look for this space. Another important thing is a metacarpal head, head tangential line. So always draw a line along the tangential of the third, fourth, fifth. The most commonly missed one is the fifth one because you will see that th for those who don't look at hand x-rays very often, we'll see that everything is normal, like I will show you in the next x-ray here. So if you see here, so another view which is important is a lateral view. Uh, you have to draw a line along the third metacarpal dorsal part and see that it does, uh, that all the, uh, the, uh, all the metacarpals are aligned well here. And the 30 degree pronated oblique view. Now, uh, what I said here is uh, there is a dislocation here of the fifth carpometacarpal joint. You can see that there is obviously that the fifth metacarpal has come down. Now that what you draw here is a tangential line, you will see, you will appreciate that the, uh, the uh, sorry, the joint, the, uh, the metacarpophalangeal joint is proximal and it is subluxated proximally. So this is a dislocation here. So always remember that it can be a only a dislocation or it, there can be a small flake here as you see here. In this case, there is a small flake here. So this is a fracture dislocation here. So here again, there is a fifth uh, carpometacarpal dislocation, the tangential line drawn, the fifth meta the metacarpophalangeal joint is not aligned. So what happens that fix it because this is because of this dis deforming forces so there are and you need to reduce it and fix fix it or stabilize it basically so there is on the fifth metacarpal ecu and the abductor so you need to fix it so what do you plan for is close reduction or ulnar gutter slab so if it is stable ulnar gutter slab is good enough or if it is unstable then put a K wire if it is unstable. O uh, open reduction internal fixation also might be required in uh, very late or old cases. So this is a case in which the fifth CMC joint is reduced and stabilized in a ulnar gutter cast. Remember that the metacarpophalangeal joint, the cast should not cover the metacarpophalangeal joint and you ask the patient to move the metacarpophalangeal joint. So this is another second metacarpal base fracture with subluxation of the third metacarpal. So in this case you need a, now as I said in, in my initial sl some slides that the f second and the third metacarpal, oh sorry, the carpometacarpal joint are the rigid and they're most unforgiving ones. So you need to fix this rigidly. 
so what we did is we fixed the first uh, metacarpo uh, sorry first metacarpal with a plate and the sorry sorry the second metacarpal with the plate and the third metacarpal just fell in place so we did not have to really fix it at one year of follow up you see that the patient has a fairly good amount of movement and uh, he is able to make good fist ear always remember that uh, when you are approaching on the radial side or on the ulnar side you have to take care of this ulnar cutaneous sorry the radial cutaneous now on the radial side so this is a most important structure and the tendons of course but the radial cutaneous now causes a lot of uh, deficit if this is injured during this procedure so so these are very high energy traumas and there can be a impeding compartment syndrome like in this case so as in this case you can see that the third fourth and fifth carpometacarpal joint there is a dorsal subluxation you need not have to see the shenton's line here and the joint is misaligned everyone will recognize there is a carpometacarpal dislocation so the main aim is to align the third metacarpal on the capitate so always look for the third metacarpal and align it on the capitate fasciotomy is also important so when in your approach when you approach this uh, Uh, open when you open this uh, uh, injuries uh, fasciotomy is uh, obviously done and uh, you have to fix it on the third metacarpal so always align it on the capitate third metacarpal on the capitate at 5 years the patient has a fairly good amount of movement with good fist and grip now this is a divergent type of injury you can see that the all the metacarpals are divergent on one side these are these are very 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 high energy trauma injuries with with compartment syndrome so uh, as i said fasciotomy is must in these cases open reduction and fixation with multiple k wires was performed and after 3 years the patient has fairly good amount of movement do the patient complains that there is some problem here and there but that doesn't really uh cause his functional deficit so the take home mes- message is that the fourth and fifth carpometacarpal joints are relatively uh common injuries and they are they are they are very uh, mobile joints and they can be reduced with closed means second third uh, second and third carpometacarpal fracture dislocation are need a relatively high trauma they can be associated with carpal injuries and compartment syndrome don't hesitate to do a fasciotomy stable fixation with k wires or a plate can be performed beware of tendons and cutaneous nerves late injuries need reduction stenolysis and aggressive therapy thank you yeah